Hey crafters, you can't see me right now, but this is Amanda here as usual. So today, as I promised in my crochet water balloon review video, we are going to be making crochet water balloons. Um, I'm really happy with how these turned out. You can go check out my video where I tested them. Uh, but now you can learn how to make some all for yourself. And I'll also type up the pattern and put it up on my blog. So you can follow along here, look at the blog, and you can make yourself a nice set of crochet water balloons. So let's look at what we need. We're going to need a size N crochet hook. This is a metal one by Boy. I really like this one. It's worked great for me. We're going to need a smaller size hook. The size doesn't particularly matter, just as long as it's smaller. Um, this is a size G crochet hook, also by Boy. And this was a pretty good size. We're gonna use this for weaving the ends in. You'll need a pair of scissors, and of course you're going to need some yarn. So I'm going to be using Yarnspiration's Bernat Blanket Stripes. This is one of their cakes. It looks so pretty, guys. I love this. I haven't really gotten onto the whole cake bandwagon, so this is my first time using a cake. I do like the, that these cakes are center pull, so I'm just going to start looking in the center here. Here we go. Here's my end. And you can see it's really nice, long variegation. It's going to be a while before we hit the yellow. So check it out. This is the yarn I'm using. Bernat also has a couple of different stripes color schemes. This is their like bright kind of colors, just fun colors. So these would be good for a water balloon. But there are other colors that are really pretty. So whatever ones you want to go with. Here's something else to be aware of if you're using one of these cakes like this. You can see here where the color change happens that it's not like in other variegated yarns where the color just kind of flows. You can see that in the factory the way they do it is they connect the two different colors and kind of wind the strands around each other. So just something to be aware of. Um, and you can also go ahead and allow the variegations and the color changes to just fall wherever they happen to fall when you're working with this yarn. Or you can purposely detach these two here and just wind up individual balls of color. But the nice thing about this cake is you can get four different colors, but you only have to buy um, one skein of yarn, which is nice if you're doing projects that only need a little bit of each color, and you don't want to have to buy a big skein of each of these four colors. So a few last things I want to talk about before we actually get into the pattern itself. So first, I would really recommend you use actual Barnett, Bernat Blanket brand. I, normally, I'm not super picky about if you use a name brand or not. There's a lot of great knockoff brands that you can save a lot of money. But if you watched my video where I kid tested these crochet water balloons, I'll put the link up here. But if you watched that one, you might remember that I had the actual Bernat blanket, which was that gray, the gray balloons. And then I had a green balloon. And the green color was a knockoff yarn from Hobby Lobby, while the gray was actual Bernat blanket brand. And I had a really boring color in that video because I didn't have a chance to go pick up one of these fun cakes yet. So I would definitely recommend you stick with the actual Bernat blanket brand for this. You'll get better results. The second thing I want to mention is also from that same video. But the pattern that I'm going to show you today, this is my own pattern. In the video where I reviewed the water balloons and tested them, I had my own pattern, which is the smaller one I'm going to show you today. And I also used another pattern um, designed by Left and Knots. And so the Left and Knots pattern is a free pattern. I'll put a link for it below. But this pattern is my own. I made it before I looked at anybody else's pattern. And there's definitely advantages of my pattern and advantages to the pattern by Left and Knots, pros and cons. The consensus seemed to be that with the smaller size balloon, they were softer, they didn't hurt as much, and they were better for smaller sized hands. Um, the disadvantages is they didn't seem to have as much water as the left and knots pattern. So it just depends on what you're going for, what age group you're making these balloons for, whether you want to use this pattern I'm showing today or whether you want to look at the left and knots one. So let's get into the actual pattern itself. So I did unwind some of the yarns so that we can work with the yellow. So hopefully this color will be nice and easy to see. And this pattern is going to be worked in the round. So we're going to start with a slip knot. And when you make the slip knot, because we're going to work in the round and we're not going to bother with a magic circle, we want to make sure the tail is long enough. So this tail right here, it might be long enough, but just to be safe, I'm going to go a little longer. And the reason we want a long enough tail is because we're going to crochet around this tail and then use it to pull our chain tight. So I'm just going to start by chaining three. So one, two, three. 
Also, I'll point out, you can see just how thick this yarn is. So once you've got your three chains, we're going to count one, two, three, and count back to that very first one and insert our hook. And then we want to do a slip stitch. Now because we're going to work around this tail here, you can either pull it this way or leave it behind there. It'll get caught either way. So we're just going to do a slip stitch by yarning over and pulling through all the loops on our hook. So basically what we've done is we've actually made a ring here. You can kind of feel with your fingers and stretch it out. And you can see how this is a chain on the outside. So we made a ring out of our three chains. So now we're going to do our first round of six single crochet. So I'm going to start with the chain just to come up the side and the chain doesn't count as a stitch in this pattern. So then I'm going to work in the circle here and complete six single crochet. So one, two, and again I'm working around this tail of yarn just kind of leaving it draped across as I work. I would also recommend that you work these somewhat loosely because if you do them too tight then it kind of makes a weird shape towards the end, but if you do them slightly loose, it'll create a nice rounded shape. One, two, three, four, five, and you do one more. Okay, so for the first round, I've done six single crochet going around. If you want to count them, you can look right along top here. Count one, two, three, four, five, six. So this right here is our first single crochet and we want to insert the hook there and we're going to join with a slip knot, a slip stitch through that first single crochet. So it might be looking a little weird right now. We're going to kind of roll the pattern back that way. This is going to be the outside of the pattern but it might want to bow this way so just kind of roll it back that way and then this is why we worked around that tail in the middle. We're just going to cinch the tail up. Just pull gently because this yarn is very thick and fluffy. You don't want to pull so hard that you tear the yarn. So just gently cinch it up and now we have a nice tight circle and we've completed our first round. So now we're going to do a chain to get up to our second round and the way the pattern works on the second round is because we're going to work in these six stitches we're going to do a single crochet and then an increase. Single crochet, increase, single crochet, increase. So we'll go from six stitches to nine. Now I'm going to work in the same spot that I slip stitched in to complete my first single crochet. And then I'm going to work an increase in the next stitch. That means I'm just going to do two single crochet in this spot right here. And then a single crochet. And then an increase. single crochet and an increase. So now from this round we're going to have nine stitches. So you want to just count back around. It's easy if you just look at the top here. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. This is the ninth stitch which is our first stitch. So we're going to come back over here and we're going to insert our hook at that ninth stitch and do a slip knot to pull it through. So as you can see we've got the shape starting to form. This is again why I said to work the first one kind of loosely just so that way if you do it too tight right now you see how it's not super rounded but if you work it loosely it'll make it more rounded. If I had done it tighter it would be very um, sharp looking. So now I should have nine stitches and for the next two rounds we're just going to do single crochet around and work evenly. So this third round I'm going to do nine single crochet around and same for the fourth round. And once more I want to make sure I work in this first spot here. If you look, this is where I just did the slip stitch where I joined and this is the spot of the first double crochet that I worked in. So I'm going to come right in here and just do a single crochet in each of the nine stitches around. And as always, if you get to the end of the row and you're not sure if you've done the correct number of stitches, count them just to be safe. And then I'm going to insert in the first stitch of the round, do a slip knot to join, and go up to my next row. You might be wondering about right here how it's a little bit gaping where we're doing the joins. That's because I did the first join a little loosely. Um, but if you want to avoid this, just do the joins and the slip, sti slip stitches a little bit tighter. But also, once you're using these water balloons, it won't matter too much. 
um, it'll, the yarn's fluffy and thick enough that it'll kind of fill in the gaps there. So for our fourth round, we're going to once more work evenly with single crochet around, which means we're going to have a total of nine single crochet when we're done with this round. Just work one in each spot. Once more, find the first stitch, insert the hook, and join with the slip stitch. So now I've done the first four rounds, and you can see it's starting to form the water balloon shape. So now it's time to come back narrower. So the way we're going to do this is we're going to start with a, with a chain to come up like we've been doing at the start of each of our rounds, and we're going to work one single crochet in this first spot. And then we're going to decrease in the next spot. So the way we work a decrease is we insert in the next stitch, yarn over, pull through, insert in the next stitch, yarn over, pull through one, and then yarn over and pull through all three because that's going to shrink these two stitches down to just one above it. Then work a single crochet in the next spot, and then time for another decrease. So insert the hook, yarn over, pull through one, then come to the next spot and we're going to insert the hook there, yarn over, pull through one, and then yarn over, pull through all three loops on the hook. And then we're going to do the same thing one last time. Work just a normal single crochet in the next spot, and then in the next two spots we're going to work the decrease. So now if we count for around the top, we're going to be down to one, two, three, four, five, six stitches, and that's exactly what we want to have. So once more, we're going to join by coming to the first stitch of the round and working a slip stitch. So now it's time to get it mostly closed, and we're going to do this by chaining one, and we're going to do three decreases going around. So we're going to go from six stitches to only three this time. So we're going to work it the same way we've been. Insert the hook in the first stitch and pull through, insert the hook in the second stitch and pull through, then pull through all three. And then just repeat this two more times going around. Now you want to be careful because you're going to start getting smaller and smaller with these decreases. You want to make sure you're counting correctly and that you're working in the correct spots because it can get easy to, it can be easy to get mixed up here. So here we are, I've just finished doing the decreases. Now if you look from the top, you can see that it's pretty tight here. I've got one stitch, two stitch, three. And so once more, I'm going to join in the first stitch of the round. And once you do this join, you can really see the water balloon shape here. Also what's cool about the Renette blanket yarn is I can squish this down, but the yarn itself kind of tends to stay somewhat stiff when it's dry and kind of fluffed out, so it's kind of got a 3D shape right now almost. So if we look at it from the top, it might look a little confusing, but that's okay, we've got three spots here, and this is kind of like our balloon, and then just for fun to make them look like a regular water balloon, we're going to make a little part that comes out, you know, like that would be the tie part. So we're going to start by chaining one, and then we're going to do an increase in each of the three stitches around. So we're in the first spot, we're going to work two single crochet, one, two in the same spot, and then come to our second stitch from the previous round and we're going to do another increase here which just means work two single crochet and we're going to do a third time in the last stitch so one single crochet two single crochet so now that is kind of going to form that little um, like the knot kind of shape and then as we've been doing with every round we're just going to join with a slip stitch And there you go, your water balloon is just about done. So the last thing we want to do is we want to fasten it off. So to do this, we're going to just pull through one more time and make a nice big loop. Now normally you don't need to make a very big loop, but we're going to do something else with this tail end, so you do want to make it somewhat large. So pull through my loop. I'm going to cut the loop. Take the end that's still attached to this ball of yarn, to the cake, and just pull that on out. And we're left with one tail end here. So we're going to gently cinch this up. You do want to be careful when you're pulling slip knots and slip stitches tighter on this yarn, just because it tends to be very grabby because it's got so much fun texture to it. 
Okay, so here's the one of the balloon that I was working on earlier. Um, and I'm going to show you how we finish it off with this one so that we can have the nice yellow and orange contrast. And that also gives you a look at what the balloons might turn out like if you just let the variegations happen on their own. So the idea here is we want to weave the tail in, but we also want to go around this narrower part here so that way it's more of a pinched look so it looks more like the balloon has been tied off because right now it's still pretty fluffy. So what we're going to do is we're going to just come through these stitches here on the side with a smaller size crochet hook or a tapestry needle. I have this boy brand size G crochet hook that I'm using and what we're going to do is we're going to just kind of weave through some of these stitches here on the side, come up the top and then catch that yarn and pull it through. Now again, as I said, this yarn can be very grabby, so you may need to actually just work it through gently with your hand and get it just to lay nice and flat and evenly in there. So you can see we've got it woven in from the knot right here, it blends in really nicely. And what we're going to do is we're going to take this tail end and wrap it around one or two times and we're going to pull pretty tight. Then pick a spot once you've got enough tail because you're going to need to do a knot with this tail end so make sure you have a long enough amount but make sure it's also wrapped tightly around here. You're going to pick a spot on the side here and we're going to pull this tail end through with our smaller crochet hook. Now to make our knot we're going to come underneath this spot right here with our hook. And we're going to pull just the tip of this yarn through. We want to kind of leave a loop here. You can see we've got a loop, got the little tail end coming through right there. And I'm going to hang on to this tail end, but I'm going to grab right here so I can cinch this up once more before we finish the knot off. So I'm just going to kind of pull it tight so it really cinches that part um, where we wrap the yarn around. And then once I've got it pulled tight, I'm going to take the tail end and feed it through the loop and pull the loop tight. And so you can see, if you look at it from this side, it gives it that nice pulled in look so it's like a knot. And also you might notice that be even though the color variegations happen there, unless you really pull on it, you don't really notice. And I think it's kind of cute having the variegations there. So then with this tail end of yarn, what's nice, it's really easy to weave this in because we don't have to hide it in the stitches. We're just gonna pull it into this inside of the balloon. So I'm gonna insert this hook somewhere down here and come out the balloon near the tail end. Then I'm going to once more catch the tail end and I'm just going to pull the tail into the middle of the balloon. And there you go, you've just finished your first crochet water balloon using my smaller pattern. Also I will mention that I did have some of the balloons where this tail that I just wove into the middle where it did want to come out, but the first, my two thoughts on that are one, if it does come out it's really easy to weave back in, all I had to do is just insert the hook, catch it, pull through. So it's not too hard if you want to weave it back in again. Um, but also, because we tied a knot here, you could even trim it or you could just leave the tail end out. It doesn't really matter. It's more of an aesthetic um, feature of the pattern. And there you go. You've got a nice crocheted water balloon. So I hope you enjoyed this week's Tutorial Tuesday. I know I've had a lot of fun with these water balloons. It's a great summer craft. Um, but comment below and I want to hear how these turn out for you and also if you make uh, the left and knots pattern, comment below and let others know what are the pros and cons of each pattern. I think it's great to be able to get feedback from people. So if you make these, I want you to give the video a like and if you make these and the left and knots pattern, I want you to leave a comment telling what you like about each one. And until next time, happy crafting and enjoy your summer. It's your lucky day, the tutorial is over, but I've got a bonus crafting tip. I seriously, when I was working on this one, this orange one especially, it looks like a goldfish and now I'm kind of hungry. But cute idea is you can design these to look however you want. You don't have to stick with just a water balloon. I mean, that's cool and all, but you can make like super epic crochet water balloons, add a fin on the top and some on the side. It kind of already looks like fish lips. So if you use your variegated yarn, you could start off with some of the red to make the first round and use those, make those fishy lips. And then you could do another color for the body and another color for the tail, another color for the fins, and it would be super cute. So just a bonus idea, and I hope that this gets your creative juices flowing and that you enjoy making these water balloons.